So I've got my lining piece all with the bottom and everything. Um, and I did go through and press all my seams. And I also pressed this opening so that it would be laying flat, uh, which will just make everything easier when it's slip stitched because it's, it's like pre-pressed with our seam allowance out. Um, so that'll, that'll make your last couple steps easier. But now it is time to finally unify the two halves of our bag. So you're going to need your whole bag body and your lining with all the seams assembled for this step. Um, so what we're going to start out by doing is we are going to, with the lining inside out and the bag right side out, we're going to put the bag inside the lining. There we go. And it's going to look like this. Um, and what you want to do is you're going to match up the four side seams um, with their equivalents on the bag. So I've got mine totally crooked right now. So it, would, it would not work. Um, there's one side seam. There's another one. And you want to be sure that you've got a position so that your long front pieces are aligned with the long front pieces of the bag body. You don't want to be uh, pinning your lining on crooked so that like a side is at the front instead of it being where it needs to be. So this is essentially like matching the notches, except um, instead of notches, it's the side seams, which is actually nicer because you can feel them with your hands. Oh, see, and I've just done what I said not to do. So you've got to make sure that it's uh, matched up with the correct seam in order to make the right shape. I had mine one over, which is just, it's not going to work. So I'm glad I caught that right away, which you'll be able to tell right away because the <laughs> if they're just not lining up, something has gone awry. So you want to be sure while you're doing this that um, you've got your drawstring casing facing down into this. Because um, this is the step that we're, we're finally going to stitch on the stitch line up top and it's going to encase all of the seams that we've put into there. So like the straps and the drawstring casing, all of that. The reason why we've been basting to the side this whole time uh, not quite as far down as we should be is because this step is going to encase all of it. So there we go. I've got my raw edges lined up and my seams pinned. Now I'm going to go all the way around and pin my stitch line. Um, and this is the step where you've got to be really sure that everything is staying flat, especially over in the, uh, the zone with the flap and the straps and the grab handle because there's a lot of layers going on there and you want to make sure that nothing's getting caught weird that you'll have to uh, fix later because it's better if it just goes right, you know, the first time. So this is a process called bagging out a seam, um, this whole thing, which is not just because it's a bag, although that, that is a fun coincidence uh, in this specific case, but it's called bagging out a seam. And so that's where um, you put lining in something and then you flip it and it conceals all of the raw edges. Uh, and so we're going to use that little hole that we've got in the bottom of our lining to flip it. And the reason why we would do that on the bottom of our lining rather than on the top where we're about to sew our last seam is for appearance's sake. Um, people are less likely to see the bottom of the bag. And so therefore you want to put anything that's going to look a little bit less nice, which would be your hand slip stitching because it's just, it's not going to be machine consistency. Uh, you want to put that there. Granted, it should be essentially invisible. But you still, when you're doing those things, like I wouldn't put my uh, slip stitching on the front of a shirt. If possible, I would put it somewhere like under the collar, someplace hidden, uh, the back. Because you don't want to highlight inconsistencies in your work, which I mean are, are required in order to do something with the lining and bag it out. So now I'm, I'm in the zone with the flaps and everything. Um, and so I'm just feeling to make sure that everything is consistent, um, lying well. I'm matching up my line, and I can I can just tell by feeling, even though there's more bulk here, the things are lying flat, which is what we want. Um, and you do want to make sure when you're doing this that all of your bag bits are inside, so like I don't want to strap loose and free because then it will uh, get caught when you stitch this seam, which is not good. Will make it very unfunctional and not properly bag shaped. So. Once you've got your seams matched and then it pinned all the way around, we're going to head over to our sewing machine for one of our last stitches of this bag project. 
over at our machine, uh, we're just going to stitch on the seam line again at our same two and a half stitch length uh, back stitching. It does not matter where you start on this one. I am starting arbitrarily in the middle of a long edge, uh, but you're, you're going around the whole thing, so it doesn't matter where particularly you start on this one. There we go. Okay, um, now I'm ready to sew. I'm just going to run a stitch all the way along this bag. And on this, I'm not pulling, I'm just letting the fabric go to the machine and I'm guiding it, which is always the case of what you want to be doing. made it back to the beginning, so I'm going to just back stitch again. And there we go. I'm going to clip off my threads. And now that you've got your seam stitched all the way around, um, you're going to be ready for our next step. So now is the moment you've all been waiting for. The moment of the fantastical magic trick that is getting to flip your project once you've bagged out a seam. So what you're going to need to do before, before you get to do the magic part um, is you just want to press this real quick. Uh, we're not doing our three-way press on this one. We're just pressing it flat uh, while we can before it's on the inside. We're going to press it some other directions once it's flipped which is kind of taking a place of the three-way, but you do want to give it a good press before you do it, even though I know that everybody is just like quaking, quaking with anticipation of the magic trick. I know I am. I mean, this is the best part, so. All right, that was all the way around. Okay, so it's time. It's time for the moment of truth. So in order to flip your bag, you want to go find that little five inch hole that you made uh, in your lining and you want to reach through and pull your bag through. Um, and you, do want, you don't want to be too rough with this because you can rip the seam. I mean, since you backstitch, it should be fine, but I'm also, I'm not like yanking it. I'm, I'm guiding it through this little hole in the lining that I left. Ooh, it's exciting. We're almost to the big reveal part where I get to Stuff lining back into the bag and okay. Yep. So right now I've got in a very silly long tube a bag and it's lining um, so now I can just kind of Whoop stuff lining inside and what I've got is an enchanting Backpack it's got a drawstring casing. It's got a flap. It's got a grab handle and straps I could write a dr. Seuss novel about this bag apparently because flap and straps both run so that that would not be too hard um, so, at this step, you should have a really exciting, so close to done bag. It's got lining, even though it's got like a little hole in it. Um, you'll fix that in a second. It's got most of its elements. Um, what you need to do now is, <laughs> you guessed it, we're going to press some more. Uh, so we want to press the top of this to be as flat as possible. Um, so we're going to do it once from the fashion fabric side and then once from the lining side. So I'm just pressing along the edge here. Uh, between this and the drawstring casing, trying to get it to lie nice and flat, which is going to be really helpful in our next step. Which I can only say that a couple more times because pretty soon we're going to run out of steps. 
and then you will have beat the boss battle in this class, and I will clap and award you a trophy that is the bag that you made. That's that's all your prize. Unfortunately, I don't have I don't have uh, you beat the class trophies. Though that I think would be a sick uh, teaching tool that everybody should invest in. Wouldn't it be cool if when you graduated you had like a trophy wall of all the all the classes that you defeated? I mean, if that's, that's your diploma and like your uh, your transcript has a list of everything, but I'm thinking of something way more exciting than that. Something much less boring. All right, now I'm back at the beginning. I'm gonna press just this last little bit in the front. And then I'm going to loop. flip it over again so I got the lining side towards me. I'm going to press that down as well. So you can see what I meant when it's kind of, it's similar in uh, vibes to our three-way press, but since we have so many layers, that's like physically not possible to do. So you'll also want to, as you go, if you've got any straight threads, be clipping those off because you don't want random loose threads making your beautiful bag um, all fuzzy. Almost there. And there we go. So we've got our bag pressed all the way around. At this point, you should be feeling really good about uh, where you are in the process. Um, I think there's gonna be like one or two videos more for just tiny little finishing things. And then you are done with this project and you've got a super cool, fun bag to carry things in.